So as with most of my videos, I am usually late because <laughs> I just, I'll watch stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I should talk about that. And then I just won't, you know, I'll, I'll maybe keep a video in my watch later or I'll keep an article um, in a tab in my web browser. And at some point I'll say, oh yeah, I need to, I need to go back and, and, and talk about that. But about a week ago now, in fact, yeah, I do think it's, it was a week. I think it was last Wednesday, last Tuesday or last Wednesday at Google I.O., what did Google announce? I mean, they did a bunch of stuff with generative AI, which I get I get it. And honestly, I fell asleep during most of it because I don't really have much interest in it. I, I understand what's going on and I can see why it's important. It can also be kind of dangerous. But yeah, I was just like, all right, I don't, I don't need to watch an hour of this. So I just slowly dozed off. And at some point I heard them say the word Android. I said, oh, I want to pay attention. It got me because they were still talking about AI for Android, but then they said, okay, now let's talk about some hardware. What did they announce? Two phones, right? Pixel 7a, Pixel Fold. In both situations, in my opinion, both of those devices are too expensive. Pixel 7a starts at 500 bucks, and you look at what it is, and yeah, if you care, go to, to Google's website, or I always use GSM Arena to compare phones. But yeah, look at look at that, and then look at the actual Pixel 7. Yes, the Pixel 7 is at this point, what, six months older, but some would consider it a better phone. And even though the starting price of that is $100 more, it is frequently on sale. Also, because it's six months older, if you're in the market or willing to buy a used phone, Without a doubt, you'll, you'll be able to find a used Pixel 7. So I wouldn't buy a Pixel 7a unless I needed to. I mean, I guess if somebody gave it to me, I'd maybe use it. But yeah, I, I between the 7 and 7a, I'm not one to talk about, oh, glass, back, and all this. The Pixel 7a is a little smaller. So if that's what you want, yeah, you know, maybe that will be the reason that you would get it. I purchased a 6a for my dad. So he's using that. My mom has a Pixel 7. He was looking at the Pixel 7a, and then I, even he was just like, yeah, I don't really see there are many differences or many reasons to upgrade. So uh, I buy their phones for them. So if he's not interested in it and I'm not interested in it, then it's not going to get purchased. <laughs> so that's that. With the Pixel Fold, 1800 bucks. Yeah, great technology. You know, it seems like it's a nice thing. I'm happy that the screen is plastic instead of glass. Uh, the in inside screen, the exterior screen looks like it's actually usable when folded up it seems like a decent a decent thing like a decent thing to use while it's closed also a decent thing to use while it's open but for yeah, yeah $17.99 I won't be buying that so if that's what, something you're interested in by all means do your thing but I, I mean I start thinking about you know like other products now, you know what but this this video is not about that I'm not gonna buy it and, and that's it if you want a 7a cool I think it should be fifty to a hundred dollars cheaper to make it more of a an A an A device in terms of price. Pixel Fold, I don't know how to price something like that. So seventeen hundred or eighteen hundred bucks. Hey, how about it? But what I was more interested about three minutes into this video was that Sony made some announcements as well. So I have been a huge fan of the Xperia Five, which they are currently up to the fourth iteration of that. But what comes first before the 5 is the 1 and the 10. Okay, so the 10 is the budget. The 1 is the flagship. The 5 is the smaller version of the flagship. So you got to make the flagship first, and then you release the small version later on. Could they release them at the same time? Yeah, they. I'm sure they could, <laughs> but they don't. And sometimes you'll get added features with the 5 that didn't come with the 1. So they're like, okay, well... A couple months have, have gone by. Let's you know add some features. But what I'm excited about, or was excited about, is the announcement of the Xperia devices. Many people don't buy Sony's. I know that. So uh, the keynote wasn't the most interesting thing. But I, you know, I watched it and I was just like, hey, maybe I'll I'll pick one of these up, or I'll just wait till the five. So with the Xperia one. I think the biggest notable changes, which again, I've never owned a one. I've owned two Xperia 5s, the Mark III and the Mark IV, but I've never owned a one. I've owned, well, at least had in my possession two Xperia 10s. I believe the first one and the Mark III. 
No, the Mark IV. Yeah. So there was a gap in between there that I didn't own any of those. But yeah, I've never had an Xperia 1. As I've complained about in plenty of uh, videos, these massive screens are, are just too big for me. The screen on this guy is 6.5 inches, which, you know, I've had a phone that it was, you know, around that. I mean, heck, yeah, that Pixel 7 is, I think, I think 6.3, that Google, not Google, that Moto G Power that I had, I believe was like 6.3, maybe 6.4. So I've had stuff, but I would prefer to not have a phone that big. But, you know, maybe I'll give it a try. But as I was saying, yeah, no, no, noticeable differences. Not going to read all the specs. But the starting storage size, I believe, was now cut in half. So it starts at 256 gigs as opposed to 512. But they both have expandable storage. So you can insert a, an SD card. So if you need more space, it is there. But they are not forcing you to pay for a, an, a heightened base model. And I'd say the other big thing, which is kind of an expected one, is in terms of the chipset, we're going from the Snapdragon 8 G Gen 1 to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. In between, there was a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus, which this little guy has. This is the Zenfone 9 that has the 8 Gen 1 Plus. But a lot of people really complained about the fact that the 8 Gen 1 was not a very efficient chip. Even though I have the Xperia 5 Mark IV in my possession, I only use it as a daily driver for maybe two, three days. So I'm just going to have to agree with them in terms of it not being the most efficient chip. Uh, but people have said that the 8 Gen 2, in terms of efficiency, has gotten way, way better. So at some point, maybe I'll get the 8 or maybe I'll get the Xperia 1, you know, just to give it a try, just say that I've had it. And of course, there are, are other things that one could say are notable. I mean, you know, other slight uh, improvements. But if you're interested, by all means, either go to Sony's website, watch some YouTube videos. Plenty of reviews or, I guess, yeah, reviews came out like the day that it was announced. So I'm sure those embargoes were lifted. So if there's plenty of information out there. I am a huge fan of their products. The only reason I don't use that as my main phone, the Xperia 5 Mark IV, is because the Zen phone exists. Something about this just keeps my attention, but I might get one of these in the future, Xperia 1s, just to see, hey, is it worth actually using? So that's that. But the other thing that I mentioned, which in my opinion might even be a little more exciting, is the fact that Sony released, well, I'll say announced, the Sony Xperia 10 Mark V, which again is the budget one, the one that you might be able to pick up for like 250 bucks, eh, 3 350 you know, buying used, you can save a lot of money. Uh, you know, we can all agree, about, agree upon that. But I did at one point briefly, very briefly, I mean for like a day or two, have a Sony Xperia 10 Mark IV in my possession. I purchased it hoping that the experience would be okay. And it wasn't. It was slow. And I said, I just can't do this. I mean, even though it was relatively inexpensive, I was just like, no, nah, can't, can't, can't do this. So I ended up returning it. And from looking at it, and, you know, before it was officially announced or released, people quickly pointed out the fact that the chipset for the Xperia 10 Mark IV and the Xperia 10 Mark V are exactly the same using the Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 5G. So both of them are using the same chip. In my mind, that means the performance is probably going to be almost identical. In terms of the GPU, also the same. So I don't know what else really would change in terms of performance. Two things that I did see that I said, hey, that might be worth something of note is the fact that the screen size is now a tenth of an inch bigger. So we've gone from six inches to 6.1 inches. So maybe you'll you know, feel a noticeable difference. I don't know. But one of the things that I was really like, oh man, I can't believe this phone is missing this. Uh, stereo speakers. The Xperia 10 Mark IV did not have stereo speakers. So the Xperia 10 Mark V does have stereo speakers. So every time that you're Laying down watching the video like this, you know, it's nice to have sound coming from both sides. So, um, so yeah, good on them finally for including that. I mean, I don't know why it wasn't included to be, you know, before. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, I mean, it looks like the battery life is a little bigger. The, uh, well, the battery size is the same, 
but for some reason the endurance rating seems to have gone up. So something might have been changed internally to, to assist with that. Um, but yeah, I, I think this might be a phone that I'm not even going to waste my time being curious about. Uh, I am a fan of plastic phones, and this phone is plastic. But do I think I'm actually going to buy it? Probably not. Uh, as I mentioned before, I might give the Xperia 1 Mark V a try, or I might wait for the Xperia 5 Mark V <laughs> to, to be announced and released. And then, of course, it costs too much, then wait around on eBay for a little bit and then see that it's, you know the prices come down a bit. So I might give that one a try. But uh, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, stereo speakers, slightly bigger screen, and Xperia 1 lower base storage cool at least in this country i believe um and yeah the snapdragon 8 gen 2 as opposed to the snapdragon 8 gen 1 so yes i'm happy that google is still releasing pixels i'm happy that we don't live in, in an apple and samsung only world so thank you for that but i'm just as if not more happy that sony is still releasing phones <laughs> i know they do not sell a lot of them but there is kind of like a cult following, I feel. And for those people, thanks. And I wish Sony did do some advertising because the phones are good. They really are. And the fact that they're just like, well, eh, we, you know, we make money doing other stuff. I'm like, yeah, I get it. But you could, you know, really show other people the work that you're doing. You know, like, I get it. Hey, you have plenty of money coming in doing other stuff. In fact, the Pixel wasn't really that much of a thing because Google had money coming in through search, you know, and, and, and Android, you know, like they had a bunch of money through other, other, other means, but it's, if you're making a good product, yeah, let, let people know, be proud of it. And, and it doesn't appear that Sony's going anywhere in terms of making phones. Oh, I, I think they're going to be around for a little while. So yeah, let, let people know when I, when I was using a Sony as my main device and I tell people what I was using, they'd always be like, Oh, I didn't know Sony even made phones anymore or, or that they ever made phones. I mean, Sony Ericsson, so forth and so forth. But, uh, but yeah, so I think I've attempted to summarize this video several times now, but good on Google for releasing the Pixel 7a. I think it's a little too expensive. Good on Google for releasing the Pixel Fold. I also think it's a little too expensive, but, you know, you know, prices will come down. I think at this moment with that, you can get a free Pixel watch if that's what you want. <laughs> And then, yes, yeah, Sony announced two phones as well, the Xperia 1 Mark V and the Xperia 10 Mark V. Two phones that I've seen some reviews on. I might give the Xperia 1 Mark V a try. But again, screen size is important to me, and coming in at 6.5 inches is a, is a bit much. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. All right.